take an open textbook, a notebook with lecture notes, some highlighters to mark key points, and throw in a source of caffeine for good measure. You might consider this night of reading and rereading to be a pretty good, if tedious, way to review what you've learned. But here's the thing. Your typical night of studying for that impending test is probably missing the most important study tool of all. More tests. See, teachers and students alike generally assume that testing and studying are two separate events, with testing functioning as a metric for studying, when it's really more of a complement. Now, let's say your teacher asks you to memorize 50 words. To study for this, you can just keep rereading the words, or ask yourself to list as many words as you can from memory. And let's say you go home. You get the list in front of you, and the first thing you try is to just read the word list and read it again, and repeat that eight times. This method of studying results in you being able to recall about 17% of the words two days later when you're taking the test. But let's say you're not satisfied with that, and you want to be more efficient. So instead of reading the word eight times, what you did was read the words six times, and ask yourself to list the words from memory twice. Studying this way results in people memorizing 25% of the words. And if you spend even more of your time listing the words instead of just reading them, you would have been able to memorize 39% of the words. These findings can be summarized by the retrieval practice effect, or the testing effect. Basically, the more you test your knowledge of the material, in this case by asking yourself to list the words, the better your memory of the material is in the long term. And this isn't the only benefit to testing yourself during studying. In one review of the literature, Testing was found to help you identify gaps or weak points in your knowledge, to improve your mental organization of the content you've learned, and even to make you learn more the next time you study. So how do you actually apply any of this? For subjects like math, you probably already test yourself by doing homework problems. But in other subjects, the methods might be less straightforward. If you're reading textbooks for science, try looking at the key words or theories in each chapter and see if you can explain them on your own after a little bit of studying. For foreign languages, you should probably try speaking that foreign language, incorporating new vocab and grammatical structures you've learned. For history, you might ask yourself to describe key events and people, or even make a timeline from scratch of relevant dates and events. The point is, regardless of what you want to learn well, there's truth to the saying, practice makes perfect. So next time you're studying, don't fear the test. Make it a part of your study routine. Hey everybody, QHack here. I just wanted to say first of all, thank you to everyone for watching and sharing my videos and commenting and tell me what you think or things you've learned. See, I, I really do this as a way to help get people talking about new ideas, especially ideas that challenge the way people typically think. So I'm here to reach out to you all about that. If you're this far in the video, you're probably pretty committed to my channel or, or you're just bored, but either way, I want to see what your thoughts are, what works about these videos, what doesn't, whether you share them and spread them around to more people, or what might make you want to. See, my main goal is to just get a good discussion going on in the world, and any feedback, any feedback at all I can get is greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching and supporting me. More videos definitely on the way. Q hat out.